In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create JSON web tokens from your .NET applications when using ASP.NET Core Identity as the identity provider. You'll notice that this isn't natively supported because by default, Identity uses cookies. So we're going to solve that in this video and let me show you how. Here's an application that's already using ASP.NET Core Identity and I'll just quickly walk you through the baseline setup that we have. You can see a call to add identity here with a custom application user and the default identity role and and then we have an EF core database context that implements the respective identity database context and it applies a few customizations. Then we also have a use case for registering a user where we are using the user manager from identity to create a new user, add them to a role and have everything persisted in the database. So the next thing we need is generating a JSON web token so that we can start authenticating with our API. So let me create another feature here and I'm just going to call this login user and we'll follow the same structure as in the register user feature. So I need a record to represent my request. This record is going to contain just an email and password. So let me add that email and then password. And I do want to have a static method for exposing my endpoint. We need an I endpoint route builder. Let's call this app. And inside of here, we want to expose a post endpoint. Let's call it login it'll be async and inside of it we need to somehow figure out how to generate a jwt or jot so first let me expose this from my api i'll go right here and say login user map endpoint and pass in the application instance so that we can expose our minimal api endpoint now one thing i want to note here is i won't be too concerned with following some best practices when it comes to how i write my code mainly when dealing with encapsulation so i'll keep all of the code that's needed to implement this inside of my endpoint. So what do I need? Well, we need to accept our request object, which contains the email and password. And I'll use the user manager from identity to perform the required database checks. So let's inject the user manager as a service. So the first thing we want to do here is to fetch the user from the database. We can use the user manager for this. And it has a nice method called find by email async, where we can pass in the email from this request and we get back a user. So if the user is null for some reason, then we could return some sort of bad request. So let's say results unauthorized, and we don't want to tell them why they aren't able to authenticate. Another thing we have to check is if the user's password is valid. There's a method on the user manager called check password async that requires a user instance and also the password. Of course, I need to use or here to check if the user is null or their password is not valid because this will return true if it is valid. In both cases, we want to return unauthorized without giving away too much details of why this is the case. So now we have our application user and we can use this to generate a JSON web token. Now, one more thing we might need is the user's roles so that we can add them as claims inside of the JSON web token. We can again use the user manager to get the roles for the user and I can just pass in the user instance and this will give me back a list of strings representing the role names. And then the next part is generating the actual JSON web token. So for this, I will need to install another library. Let me go into the package manager. I'll type in JWT bearer and I want to install Microsoft ASP.NET Core Authentication JWT bearer. This is the core library that's going to allow us to create JSON web tokens, but also validate them inside of our request pipeline. So let me install the latest version and I'll go back to my login user user case. So what do we need to do next? The next thing we need, we're going to need access to a few application settings to be able to implement this. So these are going to be the secret key that we use for signing the JSON web token, the issuer and the audience, which are both used as claims on the access token. And then we also need some way to encode the expiration. So I'm going to define these values in my app settings document. And let's define a section here called JWT. And I can provide my issuer. I'll say HTTPS localhost 5000. And this just represents the application server that's issuing the JSON web token. For the audience, I'll use the same value. So let's say we are the audience for this access token. And then I need another value called expiration in minutes. And by default, I want my access tokens to have a short lived lifetime. So let's use two minutes for example. And then we need our secret key. And this is what you're going to use to sign your JSON web tokens and also what your server is going to use to validate the JSON web token. Now, this is a secret 
value and you don't want to expose this anywhere and definitely not in your source control so i do recommend using something like user secrets to set this value locally and you can do so by opening secrets json then inside you can define a value like jwt secret key and then we can define some fairly long secret key for validating jwts so this should be sufficient and now it's only defined inside of my secrets file and i don't need to place it inside of source control so going back to our use case we're going to need a way to read these values i would recommend using the options pattern and defining a type to hold these settings but for simplicity's sake i will use an i configuration however i'll leave a comment here saying you probably want to use the options better so the next thing we want to do is to create a new instance of the signing key so this is going to be a new symmetric security key and this accepts an array of bytes so i can say encoding utf8 get bytes and pass in the string value so i'll say configuration jwt secret key and i'll use an output giving operator here when passing in this value then we need an instance of the signing credentials and here you specify your signing key and which algorithm you want to use for generating the hash a common value is hmux sha 256 but you also have a couple of other options to pick from so i'll use just this one as it's going to be sufficient for our use case then we want a list of claims that we're going to append to the access token so let's add a list of claims i'll use collection expressions to define this and what is the first claim that i need so i'll say jwt registered claim names and let's pull the sub claim and this is going to come from the user id then another one i need is the email claim i'll say jwt registered claim names email and pass in the user's email and this is the cool part that i wanted to show you you can append a collection inside of a collection expression by using this syntax then I can access the roles and for each role I want to select a new claim where for the claim types I'll pass in role and for the value I'll pass in the role itself and believe it or not this is going to compile even though this isn't JavaScript but this is what it reminds me of. The next thing after defining our claims is going to be a token descriptor so I'll create a new security token descriptor and here we are going to set a couple of these values that we are pulling from configuration which I mentioned. So the subject contains the claims identity. We'll initially it and pass in the list of claims that we created earlier we're going to define when this expires based on the current utc time and i'm going to add minutes and we're going to pull the actual value from configuration and i'll say get value we're pulling in an integer and this will come from jwt expiration in minutes then i can pass in the signing credentials and i need to pass in the issuer and the audience both of which can come from my application settings once we have the security token descriptor the rest of the implementation is simpler. We create a new JSON web token handler. The token handler has a simple create token method where we can pass in the descriptor and what we get back is a string value representing our access token. Let me make this value explicit. It's not a nullable string, so I'll omit that. And finally, I can say return results OK. And let's just return the access token as the value. And now I should be able to start my application and test out the logic that we have in here. So the first thing you want to do is ensure that you have a user registered. Otherwise, there's no point in testing the login use case. So if I attempt to do this, I'm able to register a user with an email and a password and now if I try to call the login endpoint with these credentials and I'll just change the password slightly so that we run into a problem and send this request you can see we land on our breakpoint and the user will be returned from the database it has all of the values populated but it's going to fail on the password check the password that we pass in will be hashed and compared to the password hash that we are storing in the database and in this case we'll get back a 401 unauthorized however if I fix this and I send another request to the backend we're going to pass all of the preliminary checks fetch the user's roles where there's only one role the member then we're going to create the signing key the credentials the claims collection the token descriptor and finally we'll produce an access token so if i go back to postman we get a response like this that contains our jot or json web token let's inspect what we have inside of this if i go to jwt.io i can paste in the token which i got from my server and you'll see that it has three distinct sections separated by dots so 
the first part here is the header and it contains information about which algorithm was used to sign the token. Then the second component is the payload. This contains your claims. And the last component is the signature, which is used for verifying the token. We're most interested in the payload, which contains the claims that we added to the JSON web token. And you can see the audience, the issuer claim when the token expires. This is very short lived as we gave it only two minutes to live. The email claim, the subject claim, which identifies who this access token was issued to. And then we have our custom claim representing the role, which we can use for implementing authorization inside of our code. So our token generation is working. Now the next thing we need is support for validating this token on the server. If you're looking to grab the source code for this video and all of the other videos that I've ever made, you can do so by joining my community. The link to that is going to be right below in the video description. So as I said, we already implemented our logic for generating the JSON web token. And now we want to implement validating the JSON web token inside of our application server. So we already have what we need installed with the JWT bearer library, but we do need to configure it. So I'll say builder services add authentication. And I have to pass in a delegate here to configure a couple of things. So I have to set the default authenticate scheme to JWT bearer defaults, and I'll pass in the authentication scheme. And then the next thing I need to set is the default challenge scheme. And again, I'll set it to JWT defaults authentication scheme. And the value of this is just bearer. Then we want to chain a call to add JWT bearer. And here we want to also pass in a delegate to configure how we're going to validate this access token. So we want to access the token validation parameters, which has a valid issuer that we can pull from builder configuration JWT issuer. We'll do the same for the valid audience. And we also have to set the issuer signing key so that we can verify the last component of our JSON web token. And you can see I'm getting a completion here, which is looking pretty solid. So we want to create a new symmetric security key, and this accepts an array of bytes. So I'll use encoding UTF-8 to get the value from the JWT secret key. So that's all there is to it. So now I just need to say builder services add authorization. And we also need to include the respective middleware. So right after I register my endpoints, I'll say use authentication and then use authorization. The order of these middleware is important. So you first have to define authentication and after that authorization. And to be able to test this, let's also define a simple endpoint. So I'll say app map get, I'll call this me, and I'm just going to inject the claims principle. This is natively available inside of .NET applications. I don't have to register this with dependency injection. And let me define the endpoint body. So I'm just going to say return results. Okay. I'll access the claims principle and then access the claims property. And I want to turn this into a dictionary. I'll use the type as the key value and then the value of the claim as the value of my key value pair. Finally, I need to say require authorization to enforce authorization for this endpoint. And now I can start my application and test out if this is working. So let's send another login request to get a new access token. So this is valid for two minutes. And then I'm going to duplicate this tab, update the route to target me. We don't need to send the request body and I'm not going to send an authorization header just yet. So if we send this, we get back 401 unauthorized. If I specify bearer token and I paste in the value that we just got from the login endpoint, we do get a result back containing the claims that are present on the claims principle. And again, these are coming from our JSON web token. Now notice a couple of things. The server automatically parsed the subject claim that was present on the JSON web token into the name identifier claim on the server. This is how these claims are mapped inside of ASP.NET Core. You can turn this behavior off by customizing your code. Now, nonetheless, I want to show you how we can use the roles to implement a simple authorization check for our endpoint. So if I go back to the require authorization call, there's an overload that accepts an action where I can define my authorization policy and I'll say require role and I'll access my roles class. And let's say we only want to allow this endpoint for the admin role. If I start the application and I send another request with a valid access token, you will see that we get back 403 forbidden. This means we failed the authorization check. If I go back and quickly update this to use the member role and I resend request with the same access token, this time we get back 200 OK and the results of the endpoint. So you can see how we quickly managed to implement support for generating JSON web tokens and role based authorization, which is natively supported with ASP.NET Core identity. If you're looking to extend this with support for refresh tokens, then I recommend watching this video next where I cover this topic from scratch. Make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm so this gets distributed to more .NET developers. Thanks a lot for watching this video and until next time, stay awesome.